Affinity Photo 2, the new version, comes with a great new live filter, Displace. Before it was destructive, now you've also got a non-destructive Displace. I've got this image here, nice blurry image. This one is of a street in London. And also I've got a background layer, because you can use background layers. I've just got one, but you could have, of course, multiple if you wish. So that layer is selected. Go to Layer Menu, and down to New Live Filter Layer, and Distort and Displace. So select that. The default, nothing changes. It's a slightly odd filter in that respect. Nothing changes, so if you move this backwards and forwards, no change. But what you can do, you can load map from file. You can also load map from layers beneath. I'm gonna show that first. So I'm just gonna click here, load map, and this, all these dots, that's the layer beneath, or layers beneath. It's a pity you can't actually select different layers. That would be a nice feature. Load map. Unfortunately, there's also no scaling feature. All you've got is scale to fit. It would be nice if you could scale it like 20 or 30%. Also, rotation. That would be a nice feature. Sadly, not available. So you can change that, the strength. Now you can see what happens. So if you set it like that, hardly any displacement at all. If you change it to there, you can see it goes off in that direction, go that direction. And you can see you can create some interesting displacements of the currently selected image. And you can see now you've got this live effect added here beneath this. Well, what you can do, let's just go to load method. I've actually tried it. I don't really see the difference. I'm certain there are subtle differences. I'm certain that with certain images and certain layers, you will see a different result. But personally, I can't tell the difference between going from back and forth between them. So load map from file, that's another one that's really useful. Now you can, of course, have multiple displacement map live filters. And that's another great option, but I'll show that in a little while. So let's just close that. And then you can see it there. Now if you want to, of course, you can just drag it up above and it's applied to everything then. If it's above all these, everything is modified. Personally, I prefer just to attach it to an actual layer, but you can, of course, use it in different ways. So you've got this displacement map here. If you want to edit it again, you suddenly think, oh, I've got it wrong. Just go here. Got a little icon there, and it's quite nice. It shows displacement. Not certain that really does indicate to me displacement, but still, double click that, and it will bring up the panel. Or is it just press return? Sometimes it press return. No, nope, double click. Definitely double click. <laughs> I have to make certain sometimes. So you can modify the strength again. So you can see, you can tweak it, change it. Now what you can also do is let's just change the blending mode. You can run through those and that will create some very interesting, and I'm not certain that you probably have that much use. Maybe you will. Personally, I. Most time I keep it as normal, but you can try them out. Difference hard mix does create some interesting and abstract effects using this approach. But you can just go back to normal, but you can see you can change it. And that is really great. Close it. Well, you can also just select the entire layer and then you can rasterize it. So you can go to layer, and rasterize. So it's all rasterize and it's that's it, it's frozen. You've got this, but now it is destructive. Once you've done that rasterize, you've frozen that layer and then you can continue to work with it, modify it. But what you can also do is you can add another live filter to it. So layer, new live filter layer, go down to distort and displace again. Of course, there's others as well and you can Combine them, maybe twirl and displace. Weirdly, the preserve alpha, I noticed, wasn't available when you click it again. That is so odd. I was wondering why that was missing. I'm not certain, but you can, again, there's no setting. 
It doesn't remember the last layer load map. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. So now, load map from layers beneath. You can, of course, use these red dots again, but you can also load map from file. So load map from file, and this time I'm just gonna select a random file. This one, as good as any, Regent Street in London. And you can see the result there. And you can modify the strength and you can see as you do that, of course you can see the dots because of course that was in the original image. And you can move it back and forth. And you can see, of course, sometimes you can see the image, but you can really create some very odd distortions just by just dragging that back and forth. Also preserve alpha. You can see, of course, the background there, the black there. So you can, like, personally, I prefer just to keep that off, but you can use, of course, Preserve Alpha. You can merge and delete all those and reset, if you wish, along here. Again, Sobel or Red, <laughs> again, so subtle a difference. If there is a difference, I don't know where it is, but I'm certain there is a difference but I have yet to find some example where it seems to make any noticeable, certainly visually, difference. It's a pity you can't load more than one map. Maybe create like a, in the layer effects, multiple entries, that would be brilliant within the same filter. That would be really useful feature. Sadly, not available. But again, you've got here blend modes, so you can go again, color. It creates some interesting designs. Say Vivid Light, that is quite an interesting design. And again, you can still modify the strength, so you can see that effect changing there. But most of the time, I generally keep it as normal, but it's useful to have if you want that sort of other effects. Maybe Hard Mix is a real nice one. Actually, let's just quickly try Hard Mix. Yes, Hard Mix. I think Hard Mix in the displays always works quite nice, but normal. So you've done that, you've done all your changes, you've got this wonderful effect, and then you can close it, and you can see then you've got this, and you can expand at any point, go to the layer, and you can see again you've got your displays. You can click to turn it off so it doesn't have to be shown, the visibility, and what you've got, double click it if you want to change it again. But what you can also do is you can add an additional one. Also, you can right click. So let's just right click instead of adding another one, you can just go to duplicate. So now you see you've got two displacements, displacement map one and displacement map two. Obviously you, you could rename it, so you could just call it displacement map one. Oh, typical, it doesn't put it at the end, far end. That is very odd, that's strange. It doesn't seem to want to let me do that. Okay. Oh, maybe that's a feature that's strange. I would have thought it would let you go to the end of it and type it in, but clearly doesn't. But you've got their displacement one. And you can double click it. So double click that and you can change it. So again, because it's still got the information, it knows, it does remember. When you duplicate it, it remembers, of course, the same file has been used. And you can see now I've got two. And then let's just again try the different methods. Again, no difference whatsoever, as far as I can see. You've got blend mode still again. And you can create again some really interesting combinations with that, combining two displacement maps now. But what you can also do, of course, is you could use load map from layers beneath, so click there, which creates obviously the dot one, or load map from file, and you could choose a different file. So let's choose that one, is it as good as anything? Actually, one feature that I would love to see also, and there's a few features that I would love, a smoothness. It'd be great if you could add some smoothness, so you could sort of maybe blur it, so it just sort of makes it, it's always a bit harsh, I think, the displays. It's great, but it just could do with a few additional features. Scale, rotation, and smoothness would be brilliant, as well as multiple possible displacements. So once you've done this, you can see now, you can change the strength there, and you can create all kinds of distortions to the layer. And you can see it just going off on here, off this it's really, really nice, spread out across the entire image. And of course, I've just done it with one layer. You could do it multiple layers. So let's just close that now. You could simply duplicate that layer. Now if you just go there, right click again and duplicate. Now you've got two. And of course you can modify these displacements. They're independent. So you can combine that as well. 
double click there, change that fact, and then you can see you can create two displacements on top with two displacements, two images with two displacements. But also what you can do, select this, select the actual layer itself, go down to effects, click there and go to 3D and you can see what's happened. It creates, you've got that displacement with the map obviously you've got there, but now you've got like a little painted effect, very painterly sort of effect, giving sort of depth. You've got 3D, you can also go to bevel and emboss. So you can just try those out, maybe play. Now, the more you add, you can see it takes a bit of time to process. It's gonna be. Also, you can add Gaussian blur, inner glow, all those sort of features, but you can tweak it. And as you see, you can change it and close. And that effect is there. It's not applied to the other one. And again, you can, of course, change the blending modes. Run through it, just change the blending modes between them to create some really weird combinations. And of course, you've got different displacement maps, different, and so on. And it doesn't have to be the same image, of course. I've just used the same image just to demonstrate, but you don't have to use the same image. So you could create all kinds of very unusual painted designs. Now, you could also use this with obviously not just this sort of image, maybe gradients, brush strokes. So brush strokes can also have that displacement, maybe text as well another possible video as well on that. But you can create some great effects with this and it's still all live. So at any point, you can double click any of those and you can tweak them. Again, for some weird reason, that feature there, the alpha is off there. I don't know why, but clearly that feature seems to be, and if you can deselect that, it does change slightly, obviously the scale, but it would be nice a scale factor more than that and close. And there it is, live displays, really nice feature. I'm certain there's even more things to work on, understand it, but it's a great feature. Please put in the comments, how will you be using this? Will you be using this feature? Do you think it's a great one? And do you think that they should have more of these displacements as live filters? I would love to see mirror. That would be the one that I would love, and deform. I would love to see that as a live effect. Sadly, it's not, but it would be great to see. This is a great addition to Affinity Photo version two. Thank you much.